Okay. My long search is over. That search has been for the NPC that I like the best. And it's hands down the 60. I haven't tried the Mark 1. This is the Mark 2. Yes, it looks a lot like a cash register or a big calculator. I do still like this style very much. It's absolutely huge. So before I get into comparing how large it is, to give you some kind of scale, um, I've had almost every NPC except for the 500 and the 4000 and some of the newer ones like the the MPC1, the MPCX. I haven't had those, but from oh, and I also haven't had the 2500, but I've had the 1000. So I've had the 60, the 3000, 2000, 2000 XL, 1000 and 5000. And this one is the best by far for me. I love it. I scoured, I've been scouring the internet actually for years, blogs, forums, and uh, videos, stuff like that. And I've heard people liken this sequencer to kind of clunky in a good way. And I get that now. It does have a very loose feel to it. Uh, it's a different feeling. It's a different feeling than all, every other NPC I've had. It is archaic. I don't know how many seconds it has. 30 seconds of sample. I don't even know. I've only had it for a day. Uh, I need to do some upgrades to it. The screen is on right now. And look how faint it is. Anyway, you get the picture. And I'm going to get an LED. And I'm also going to get a GoTech or equivalent drive for it. And once I do, I'm going to be sampling all kinds of stuff into it. Like, uh, like this. Actually, this might give you some kind of scale. Let me just put it on the pads. All my stuff is all dusty. It's embarrassing. Um, yeah, look at that. Look at the size of this thing. So an XL for scale would come around right there. A 3000, I think around right there. So this thing is just absolutely massive and it's not just wide, it's really deep as well and heavy. So let's go look at the back. Let me take these off. This off. But yeah, I'll be sampling different things into it like uh the vocal drum, the Korg ER1, I'll be sampling into it. Uh, that's a sampler itself, so I won't be sampling in that. And some synth stuff. You know, I have a an Akai Mini AK or Mini AK, however you say it, here, which is an outstanding synth. I love that thing. And MS1 here. Really nice electron, just got it covered up for dust. And, uh, you know, this is my latest acquisition. It's very, very nice. I'm enjoying it a lot. These are stellar. And I've ordered a microcosm. Hmm. I don't even know. Uh, the one that does stutter, anyway. But, uh, yeah, I'll be sampling all kinds of stuff into this once I do get my drive and maybe even sharing some of those samples once they're in the machine maybe I'll put them in the machine record out but yeah I was about to show you the back let's just look at the, the front actually so the mark one yeah mark one looks cooler in a lot of ways I get it I still dig the mark two I I've always liked the shape of it in the aesthetic, I had no idea that it was going to be this large. This one that I got in particular is in, from what I understand, really good condition. This is 2021. 
So this machine's, you know, pretty old. So it has the occasional nicks out of it and stuff like that. It also, and uh, you know, the typical wearing on the metal data wheel. It also has some paint. It looks like someone's been doing some rolling around it. And I've uh, had that on other instruments and it, it wipes off. I just haven't finished cleaning it. I may do the whitening on the buttons. I don't know. If it's risky at all, I don't want to risk it, so maybe I'll just leave it. Um, the build quality is absolutely outstanding. It's unbelievable. This is a complete <laughs> metal plate here, this full metal plate. And the way that everything's separated inside, the boards for this are attached to this underface. So when you lift this cover... The other boards are laid inside, and it probably could have been, you know, four to five inches more narrow. There's There seems to be space inside on each side. I will do some future videos about this. This is my new, um, my new love. It's beautiful. This is my new center of my studio now. I originally bought it thinking I would probably flip it. But now having used it, and how much I love it, yeah, outstanding. The feel of the buttons is far superior to an XL or Classic or 1000, like all the rest that I've tried. Of course, it's the same as the 3000. The other thing is this has an operating system of 3.10, which makes this essentially essentially not entirely an mpc 3000 but with the 12-bit um sample rate not sample rate the 12-bit uh 12-bit sampling instead of the 16-bit so this is an mpc 3000 essentially but with 12-bit sampling so for me, that's awesome. I've had the 3000. I really liked it. I liked it a lot. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but I found the, the sound wasn't different enough from other NPCs. And you call me crazy because a lot of people swear by the sound. But, you know, I, when I compared it to, for example, my live and what it could do, it didn't feel like uh, it was filling a gap that I needed to. Uh... So this, on the other hand, completely fills the character of sound that I was after. The people aren't exaggerating when they say that this is, it's magic somehow. It's absolutely magic. And I can't ex explain why. Well, I can't explain why. It's only what I've read, though. And that's the AD converters and um, just the entire unit itself and how different it sounds from the 950. I've never listened to a 950 in person, so I don't know really. But as far as sound goes, this is the best MPC I've, I've used. And as far as so far usability and, and how it feels, it feels very very open it's it's um very spread out and, and laid out there's nothing cramped or tight here it's yeah it's all just right the pads are just so buttery and so perfect that's what i liked about the classic was the pads and the xl i found those pads were the best so far but until i tried this the 3000 was good too don't get me wrong, but uh, for some reason, I'm just really, really grooving with this 60. So let's have a look at the back. I think I might need to replace the fader as well. It's pretty tight. It works fine, but the volume knob crackles. I'll fix, maybe spray that or even replace that eventually. I, I'm an amateur with this kind of stuff, so... It's not like I need these machines to be 100% functional for my career. I just do it for fun. So I'm just some rank amateur in his basement having a midlife synth crisis. 
and sharing this MPC-60 with you. So a quick aside on making MPC-60 videos. Uh, f for what I want in a, those videos when I was looking and researching before I bought one, what I feel I want to start making now is more, or at least one, long video with just uh, just looking at it very closely. Maybe even opening it up and just just a really long look at it. Longer than this even. Maybe without talking. Maybe just beats or something. But uh, yeah, so here's the back. You can see the paint that I've got to work on removing. The corners are in excellent condition. Look at this. So nice and clean. I'm so lucky to have found this. And I got a, a good price on it. So let's take a look. This is important to me. I like to see this. Made in Japan. I like that. My hands are dirty. I've been working, doing a little bit of construction these days. So uh, my hands are kind of grimy. Uh, foot switch. I don't really use those myself. Metronome out. I haven't listened to that yet. That's... That's interesting. Uh, the sink, I'm not going to be using that. MIDI in and out. I love that it has that many MIDI outs. And this, as it's going to be the centerpiece of my studio, I will probably connect a bunch of the, the synths to it and, and control it through that. I've done that with the other NPCs like the XL and the Live. And it's... It's fun. It's really nice to be able to use an MPC sequencer and pads even to um, to make your tracks. It's pretty pretty handy. I really like the MPC workflow as well. It, it seems to work with my brain. Electron, not so much, but yeah. So yeah, input mono in. I don't care. A lot of people are um, maybe at one point I'll. I, you, there is a way to do a workaround for stereo. You record it once mono left, once mono right, and then the software upgrade allows you to combine it and make it stereo, from what I understand. So there's no pot here, no uh, knob. It's just high, mid, or low for the gain. They return in, That's a so that's essentially... Um, effect loop. Effects out here and then back in here with the trim knob, which is nice. That's pretty cool. I've tried it a little bit. I'm still, I don't think I actually got it to work yet. So that's something I have to play a little bit more with and, and figure out. Stereo output, of course, and something that always makes me so happy and feel that a, a machine is professional. And that's individual output. Outputs. Look at all these outputs. So nice. Let me remove that. So beautiful to see that many outputs for me. So, yeah, there's a serial number. If anybody's interested. Yeah, look at this thing. So, yeah, that's, that's my new pride and joy right there. A little blurry. Let's see if it comes back. Yeah, that's my pride and joy right there. I was really uh, into XLs for a while. I, I was actually buying and selling a bunch of them, probably 15 of them last year or something like that. And I really, like I said, I really dug the the 3000. It was nice. But not unique enough. And this is definitely unique. Some of the drawbacks, well, the size is not convenient it's huge it's too big to put on my shelf with all my other my other gear and the loading time takes a while might be faster with the usb gotech drive i don't know but even if it's not uh, it doesn't bother me you know, another drawback is a limited sampling time. 
none of these things, these things concern me because to me it's primarily going to be a beat machine. Maybe I'll think of it more of as as a granular synth or or whatever later, or you know whatever else, but uh, a phrase sampler even or. But for now, it's more really a a beat making machine. So, yeah, look at that. I'm a very, very fortunate person. And happy. So let's compare this and wrap up the video. I've already compared the Volca. Oops, making some noise here. Okay, so there's the live, there's the 60, let's hang this over the 60, and look how much larger it is, it's just an absolute beast. You know, speaking of the live, it's, uh, it's fascinating to me that I have one of the first MPCs now. You know, it's the Mark II, but it's still one of the one of the first. So a very historic piece. And I also have one of the more recent pieces. I know it's not the most recent, but it certainly is in the new family of MPCs. And wow, it is mind-blowingly amazing. That said, as amazing as it is, I'm very sure that I'll be able to make the beats that I want with the with the sound that I want for the of the beats, you know, primarily hip hop beats and even house though and techno. But I think I'll be able to make the beats on here, sample them into there, work them the way I want, and then put them in my DAW, all the tracks. We'll see. We'll see. Even if I don't record anything and it's just for myself to make beats and that's fine. This is like a, like I said, this is a piece of history right here. And how lucky am I to be able to be with it? Anyway, I've droned on long enough. You must really love MPC 60s for having watched it this far. And if you do, well then, hey, I'm with you on that one. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.